Yellow, Ralph McIntyre here with Astro Map Wings. Well, I'm here to do another video on Mars and Aries. And not only is Mars and Aries its own sign, so any time a planet's in its own sign makes it super strong. And when we're talking about Mars, Mars is that assertive, that kind of get up and go energy. Aries is that kind of wanting to take action, new beginnings. I want to talk a little bit about the first house too. And we're going to also bring in Pluto and Capricorn and Saturn and all the things that are going on in the last couple of years. Because to me, this the way astrology works is it kind of sets you up for the transits to come. So the transits that happened last year and the year before are kind of setting us up to handle Mars and Aries. And not only Mars and Aries, Mars is getting ready to go retrograde mid-September and is going to be retrograde through the election. So this next couple of months is going to be really interesting. I apologize for the sound. Um, I'm recording in a different place and you'll hear a train occasionally. Nothing I can do about it. So I apologize. So Pluto, Capricorn, Saturn, Capricorn. Pluto's been in Capricorn for quite a while. The South Node was in Capricorn. You remember, if you look at my YouTube channel, there's plenty of videos on this particular subject, so I'm not going to spend too much time. But I want to talk a little bit about it because it's key to helping you understand how this transit's going to affect you personally. So... One of the things you want to do is you want to look back to the things that were agitating you that when Pluto was in uh, retrograde, connected to South Node and Capricorn and Saturn um, last summer and the summer before, because those are going to be key to understanding what Mars wants. Generally speaking, when we're agitated, when we're uncomfortable, it's because we're not moving in alignment with our own soul's goal. And the stars will kind of put tension on us to keep us focused, to keep us kind of pointing in the right direction. And Mars and Aries, especially right now, is very much that's the case with Mars and Aries. Mars and Aries wants you to take action. And so every planet will enact its energy on you. So if you're taking action, you're making Mars happy. If you're not taking action, Mars is going to get you reactive. You're going to be reacting to other people's things. So right now, especially as we've had Mars come forward in Aries for a while now, it's getting ready to go retrograde, which means it's going to go backwards and go over the places in your chart that it's already gone. So it's almost like a redo. You know, the first time through, it's generally the hardest because it's a new energy force. So when the planet goes retrograde, it's a time to rethink, reevaluate, and take different actions, especially in the case of Mars. And so Saturn... Capricorn, in my opinion, gets a bad rap. I've done a bunch of videos on this. You can look at them. Um, I'm just going to briefly talk about it. So Saturn traditionally is the planet of constriction. It's the planet of society structure. To me, Saturn is not really... That's one way Saturn can act as energy. Saturn's main goal is to achieve greatness. Saturn wants you to put your nose to the grindstone and achieve greatness. If you really stay focused, what are you capable of as Saturn's? And so, as Pluto sits in Capricorn, Pluto is the subconscious. Pluto is all the things that are holding you back. So where Pluto sits are the areas of where we have to rethink, we have to let go, we have to reinvent, we have to let what's no longer servicing, servicing, excuse me, serving us go. And so as this pertains to Mars, because Mars will square Pluto, it's going to interact with Saturn as it goes retrograde. And so... We have to look at 
where we're holding us back. And this is where Saturn's and that fear, that society's fear, that idea of safety, because a lot of people, including myself, a lot of times when I was talking about Saturn before Saturn hit the South Node, where I started to really think about it from a different perspective. Um, Saturn can traditionally be like, oh, let me save money for the future. Let me prepare for the future. Let me do, you know, put off what I want today so I can have what I need tomorrow. And not to say that that's not a good way of using Saturn's energy, but there's a balance. You know, if, if you're continually putting off today so you can have tomorrow, what if tomorrow never comes? You know, all those people that went and put their, you know, went to work every day, did, did their due diligence, put their money in the bank account, save, 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 and then boom, the world blows up and everything disappears. Your job, your money, your house. You know, the people in Northern California where they're being burnt down right now. You know, the hurricanes, you know. So along comes Mars. Along comes that first house energy. Along comes Aries. About living for today. What do I want? Mars, Aries. What do I want? And so one of the favorite ways for me to talk about the first house or that Mars, Aries kind of energy is enlightened selfishness. And what I mean by that is that if you're selfish from the lower ego, like, oh, I want, you know, a big car. I want a lot of money. I want, you know, whatever. I want to beat my neighbor. I want to, you know, win. I want to be the top dog at work or whatever. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But what we're talking about here is soul fulfillment. What do I want from the perspective of soul fulfillment? And so if you look back to where Pluto, when Pluto was interacting with the South Node and Saturn last couple of summers, and you think about what was really agitating you, and you really sit with it, and really sit with why were you agitated, you know, and you might actually feel this agitation right now. I noticed myself as Mars went forward, you know, there was some wanting to take action, but there was some kind of being stuck in fear and getting agitated, reacting to others. And that's the thing. It's Mars is going to act in two ways. It's either going to take action or it's going to react to others. It's either facing your fear or crippled by your fear. And so as Mars moves retrograde, as the world starts to come apart, as everyone's freaking out, everyone's in fear, you know, as you lose that security, you know, as the jobs go away, as all these things go away. Here's another first house concept. What makes you happy? You know, that enlightened selfishness. What makes your soul smile? You know, and that's what this Mars in Aries is asking of you. So, in my opinion, to really get the best out of this transit is to understand where this sits in your chart, where your own particular Mars is, where you have air is, where Pluto sits in your chart transiting right now, where Pluto sits in your chart natally. And by unpacking that, you can help you understand what your true soul desire is, what's going to really make you happy. Not like happy, like secure, but happy, like soul joy, like soul fulfillment. And the more you reach towards that, the less all the things that are going to happen in the world are going to affect you because you're focused on the long range picture of what makes my heart happy, what makes your heart happy. And the more you focus on that, the more you take this Mars energy and take action. And as it goes retrograde, it's a really good time to rethink what didn't you do? What did you want to do and you didn't do? Where were you holding back? Where was society's fears holding you back? Where was your fear of security holding you back? 
You know, so one of the things, it's like we all have a lot of free time. What are you doing to utilize it? Are you reaching for your dreams? I remember when I was first starting out my own business, a friend of mine shared something with me that really kind of shook me to the core. And that was work for your dreams. Otherwise, someone else will hire you to work for theirs. And that's the reality. You're either working for your dreams or you're working for someone else's dreams. And so the more you take action right now, the more you take action to what you want, what your heart wants, you know, enlightened selfishness, because here's the deal. Optimism, happiness is contagious. You want to save the world, be happy, thrive. The more you thrive, the more other people see that, hey, the world's coming apart and you can still thrive. Wow, what's he doing? What's she doing? It's contagious. So follow your heart. Reach for what you want. Take action. Don't let the fear of all the things that are going on slow you down. Mars and Aries. Nothing can stop Mars and Aries. You know, it's like, what are you going to allow get in the way of your happiness? My suggestion is nothing. And the other thing is, is when you reach for the true soul level happiness, it's not tied to anything that can be taken away. If your happiness is tied to anything that can be taken away, it's fragile. Just look at what's just happened in the last six months here in, on the world. You know, if your happiness is tied to going to work, if your happiness was getting away from the family, getting out of the house, getting whatever, all of a sudden, no, you can't go out. You can't go to work. You can't make money. Are you unhappy? Do you have to be? You know, it's funny. I was talking about Uranus and Taurus. Uranus is that rebel wanting to do its own thing, doesn't want to fit in, wants to be the kind of oddball. Taurus is that security, safety, kind of warm, good feeling. You know, so one way to enact Uranus and Taurus in this crazy time where it's kind of an epidemic to be having a hard time is to not smile, reach for what you want, take action. Don't let anything stop you. You can do it. That's all Mars and Aries. And as Mars goes retrograde, you know, a lot of astrologers are going to paint this doom and gloom. And yeah, there's doom and gloom, but it doesn't have to be doom and gloom. You don't have to buy into it. Turn your TV off. Turn the Facebook off. Turn YouTube off. Focused on what your soul wants, what makes you happy. You deserve it. We all are supposed to thrive. And the more each of us thrive, the more we inspire other people to thrive. Be happy. Reach for what you want. Take action. You don't have to react to the craziness you can do and you can do simple things. You know, it's like it doesn't have to be that complex. You know, it may be just a simple, you know, meditation, writing a book, taking a singing classes, something that just is kind of simple that no one can get in the way of, you know, and the more you understand by looking at where this sits in your chart, so where Mars sits in your chart, where the North Node sits in your chart, the more you can understand what your soul's goal in this lifetime is. And in my opinion, that's the key to happiness, is using the planet's energy to work towards your soul goal. And the more you do that, the more you have this everlasting happiness. And remember the overarching transit right now is that Neptune and Pisces connecting with the divine connecting with God or however you like to use you know that pure source energy the more you're connected in with pure source energy the more you're getting the guidance the more you're taking the action that's truly in line with your soul's goal when you're connected to the divine there's nothing to fear so remember take action Look at where you're agitated, why you're agitated. Have the Pluto strength to look deep under the covers and really understand. 
And very often when you're agitated, when you're reactive to other people, it's because you're not doing the simple things that is in line with your soul. And it's not that you're not doing it, because I don't believe anyone cannot do what's in line with their soul. I think that's impossible. But what I'm really saying is the nuances. It's like it's wanting to kind of tweak you, get even more in line with your soul. That's what that uncomfortable feeling is about, is kind of this universe pushing you in the right direction. You know, it's funny, I was talking to a friend and I have this problem. I used to be in construction. I can make a lot of money doing construction. And it's kind of a curse because it's really easy for me to fall into doing something I can make a lot of money in. And it's much harder for me to do things like videos and, and write and, and be creative. But that's what makes my soul happy. I do construction. I get kind of loopy. I get all depressed. I want to drink like a fish, you know. But when I... Don't let that money grab you. Don't let the security of money grab you. And focus on really what makes your soul happy. The more you thrive, the more the people around you thrive because it's contagious. Remember, when you're happy and thriving, it's hard to not be happy and thriving around people who are happy and thriving. You'll attract more people that are happy and thriving. So remember, as this Mars goes retrograde in Aries through the rest of the year, past the election, as the world comes apart, don't buy into it. Focus on what your soul wants. Tune out the rest of the world and focus on what really makes you happy. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. Please click like and subscribe. I try to upload regularly. I'm trying to get back into it. And I have a bunch of videos on Pluto and Capricorn. I have another video on Mars and Aries. So check out my YouTube channel and I hope to see you soon. All right, have a fabulous day.